Okay, wow, so it has officially been six hours without stopping. Oh. Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year medical resident. I'm just heading out to go to the hospital to start a night shift in the intensive care unit, but it's been a blizzard for two days, so I think we should go early. I have a feeling it's gonna be tough to, to drive there. I forgot that I'd only de-caked the car. I hadn't actually taken the ice off. All right, so I just got handover and heard about all the patients from the daytime team. And there are more COVID patients than last time I was here, but they all seem relatively stable um, and slowly improving, which is fantastic. Now let's go and uh, get a call room and uh, go from there. All right, perfect. Everything you need. Oh, and I wanted to update you guys. Um, for those of you who watched my last video for ICU, the COVID patient who was really sick that we had to intubate and, you know, hook up to life support. She's now COVID negative. She's out of the ICU. She's doing super well. Um, I didn't get to see her, but I am, I'm so happy. This just kind of like made my day. Uh, and if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it up here because um, it, was a, it was a tough call shift. Uh, anyway, good news all around. Okay, so heading back down to the ICU for evening rounds but I'm hoping that the cafeteria will still be open and I can at least get some caffeine for tonight. <laughs> That's so sweet. The little things. Oh, all right. Looks like the emergency department. Let's see, I bet it's gonna be a consult. <laughs> oh, hi, it's Siobhan from IC returning a page. Sorry, did you say she is intubated? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll be down to see her. Okay, so that was um, one of the eMERGE physicians. So he was telling me about an elderly woman who came in to the emergency department pretty confused. Um, and then while she was in the hospital, she actually lost consciousness and wasn't protecting her airway. Um, so they intubated her. And basically, if someone's intubated, they're coming to the intensive care unit. It's the only place in the hospital where you can look after intubated patients. I don't know what's caused it, so let's look up some for blood work here. And I can see that they've ordered a whole bunch of blood work. A lot of it's not back yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, they did do a CT scan of her head. There's no signs of bleeding, no signs of stroke, and they're saying no causes for her loss of consciousness there. Um, and her blood glucose has been a little bit low and they've replaced that in the emergency department, but again, not so low that it would explain this. Um, okay, so not seeing anything else that's going to help us figure it out on the computer, let's go and actually see her. Walking into the room, I see an elderly woman who is unconscious and hooked up to life support. The first thing I notice is her heart rate is slow, in the low 50s, and her systolic blood pressure is also low, in the 90s. I ask her nurse to do an ECG to check for a cardiac arrhythmia but it just shows a slow heart rate and it's otherwise normal. Okay, so I've put an admission order so that patient can get transferred down to the intensive care unit. We can keep looking after her there, but I don't have a clear sense of what's going on and that's really frustrating. I worry we're missing something. Um, so I'm gonna call her daughter to update her, but also to get a bit more information. Um, and I've ordered a couple more investigations too. Well, thank you again for all the information, Darlene. Um, I'm sorry that we had to sort of meet under, under these circumstances, but I will certainly update you if anything changes tonight. Okay, have a good night. Okay, bye. So it sounds like the patient and her daughter are really close, talk every day on the phone, and it sounds like she's been really tired for the last couple of weeks, maybe even months. They thought it was mood related because of COVID and she hasn't been as active but then she hasn't been answering her phone for the last couple of days. And that's when Darlene started to get worried, went over and then ended up calling an ambulance. Okay, let's see if any of that blood works back yet. Wow, okay. 
Um, so her TSH is extremely high. So that, that's um, to do with the, the thyroid and it basically tells your body, I want more thyroid hormone, um, but it doesn't look like her body is making enough. Her sodium's a little bit low and her glucose, her sugars has dropped down again. So, wow, okay, we've got a diagnosis. This is something called myxedema coma. You know what? I've never actually seen this in real life. This is the first time you study about it, it's on our exams. Myxedema coma is a rare, life-threatening condition caused by untreated hypothyroidism, which means your body isn't producing enough thyroid hormone. Your thyroid is a butterfly-shaped organ on your neck that regulates your metabolism. When your thyroid hormone is low, your heart rate slows down, your blood pressure becomes low, and your core temperature gets colder. You become tired, your skin becomes dry, and your hair becomes brittle, and your bowels slow down causing constipation. Rarely, if hypothyroidism isn't treated, and there's a stress on your body like an infection, you can slip into a coma, which can be deadly. But we can reverse that with the proper treatment. This is fantastic. Now that we know what's going on, we can actually treat her. I had this feeling that we were missing something. There had to be something else. Okay, let's go write some orders. I'm ordering thyroid hormone replacement through the IV, as well as IV steroids, because patients with myxedema coma can also stop making enough cortisol, which can be life-threatening. So it's better to treat them right away rather than waiting for a blood test to return. I love walking this way at night because you get a whole view of the city. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, <laughs> you can see me though. Um, but I love, I love this view. I just got paid by the emergency department and apparently there's um, a woman who has really severe lung disease at baseline. So she has severe COPD and requires home oxygen. And uh, she's coming in feeling much more short of breath. And they think that she may need to come down to the ICU for extra support breathing, whether that's putting a tube down her throat or having a machine that sort of pushes more air into her lungs. Uh, so we're gonna go and assess her now and see, see what we think. So it sounds like she came in really dehydrated, her heart rate was up and then she was breathing faster. But once the heart rate was normalized, she's breathing well, her blood pressure's better, she feels great, she's talking normally. So I don't think there's any need for her to come to the intensive care unit. Um, although she might need to stay in the hospital with internal medicine. Okay, I admit this doesn't look the best, but it tastes fantastic right now. It's pretty lazy dinner. It's like a pre-made um, lentil soup, but like warm at night. Oh, it just feels so good. <laughs> mm. Okay, um, so let's look at that patient's blood work now. The one who had the pneumonia that wasn't looking as sick as we thought they were gonna be. So I'm just hoping her blood work also looks better. Lactate is also down. Great. So. All of those abnormalities are normalizing, which makes sense because um, when a patient looks so good, I just expect them to start improving. And if they didn't, then we'd have to start thinking about other causes, but that's not the case. So I'm gonna call the internal medicine team and ask them to, to see this patient instead of the intensive care unit. Oh, hey Chantel, it's Siobhan. Yeah, 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 I'm on ICU tonight. If you need anything else, just let me know. Okay, thank you, bye. Dare I say it, I'm actually gonna try to get a little bit of sleep and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Siobhan from IC, returning a page. Okay, I'll be right there. Thanks, okay, bye. So there's a patient in the emergency department who just got intubated, but their blood pressure is still low and they're still having trouble breathing despite a tube down their throat and being hooked up to machines. So head in there right now. The next six hours pass by in a blur. I admitted three patients who were extremely sick and I felt pulled in a million directions. 
The nurse looking after the first patient brought me an ECG to look at, while the nurse from another patient called out saying the blood pressure is getting dangerously low. I was delegating tasks, doing procedures, ordering medications and updating families. I never left the ICU, I didn't drink water, I didn't go to the bathroom, and I definitely didn't have a moment to film. Until now. Okay, it's 7.30. I'm so incredibly tired. I feel like a zombie right now. Oh man. Okay, wow. So it has officially been six hours without stopping. Oh my gosh. My face. Oh wow. A lot of excitement. Patients are all doing better than they were at like two in the morning. So treatments are working. That feels really good. <laughs> but I feel like my brain is grinding to a halt. Um, but I'm lucky because my staff actually said I can go home an hour early um, and I uh, don't need to stay here until, until nine, can head out around eight. So that's coming up really soon. All right, well, after a sleepless night and a pretty intense call shift, I am so excited to see Mark. He's picking me up and we can celebrate Valentine's Day together, even though I'll probably be pretty sleepy today, <laughs> but it's gonna be really nice. Hey, how was your shift? I got you a treat. Oh my gosh, this is so perfect. This is exactly what I needed, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe, and then I'll see you in the next video. So, bye for now.